Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about early contact lens history. So when you talk about early contact lens history, you generally uh, don't think of this individual, but let's start with the Roman Emperor Nero. Um, in the first century AD, uh, he would actually watch the gladiator games in the Colosseum, and he would look through an emerald. So it's recorded by a historian during the time named Pliny, and he would write about how he would use this emerald to view the games. Now you could speculate whether it was for the coloration of the lens or if it was for the refractive properties. You know, was Nero uh, myopic? We, you know, that we don't know. But that's kind of the, the genesis of using uh, lenses for refractive purposes. With contact lenses, you usually will start with Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci uh, was an Italian Renaissance man. So like scientist, mathematician, engineer, painter, you name it. Uh, in 1508, he drew a sketch of a man with his face submerged in a bowl of water. Um, and this kind of demonstrated the corneal neutralization, so the refractive power of that bowl with the water in it to improve their vision. After Leonardo da Vinci, we moved on to René Descartes. And that was in 1637. So he was a French uh, scientist. And what he did was he thought of something called the hydrodioscope. And what this was is a, an elongated tube that was placed on the eye, filled with water. And again, it, it just demonstrated the power of using water to create a new refractive surface with the cornea. And, and I'll show just a quick example of that side view of the cornea. If it's not perfectly spherical, as, as the normal cornea will not be perfectly spherical, you know, if you put a new object, let's just say it's a bowl over it, and you fill it with water, much like a contact lens, it's creating a new refractive surface for light to go through. So that's kind of what Leonardo da Vinci and Rene Descartes, what they did there. They're demonstrating that and it started to get people thinking about it. So the next notable person that we're going to talk about is a man by the name of Thomas Young in 1801. So he was an English, English physician and he actually studied the cornea. Um, and what he studied about the cornea was how it differs from the crystalline lens in that it doesn't have um, an accommodative strength to it. He also studied wavelength theory and really propelled uh, the theory of, of light and wavelengths. But what he did with the cornea, which set the page for the years to come, is that he showed that, you know, again, if this is our side view of the eye, the front, the cornea is about 43 diopters of refractive strength, and then the crystalline lens, on average, about 17 diopters. Well, we know that through accommodation, the ciliary body and, and the zonual fibers, they'll actually relax and make the lens rounder, uh, increasing its, its amplitude of accommodation, which is a fancy way of saying it gets stronger, so it helps people to see up close. But Thomas Young, 1801, he said that the cornea, what we most interact with with contact lenses, that that has nothing to do with accommodation. And, and what's the implication of that? Well, if, if that's a constant power on the front of somebody's eye, then it leads to people who will actually put something on the front of somebody's eye, knowing that you can you could uh, alter the vision, alter the way that light refracts through that, and it's not going to be changed through accommodation. So Thomas Young, 1801, very notable character. So next we look at Sir John Herschel, 1823. So he was an astronomer, astronomer, English physician. And what he did is he was the first person to actually describe a contact lens. So J Sir John Herschel, 1823, actually described a contact lens, right? Because everything before this was like, put your face in a bowl of water, use a hydrodioscope and put water up against your eye. It, it, was, it was setting the theory but it wasn't actually describing a contact lens, and that was Sir John Herschel. So after Sir John Herschel, we look at F. A. Mueller in 1887. He's a German glass blower, and what's interesting with him is he had a case where um, a patient was monocular, so they only saw out of one eye, and the one eye that they did see out of, um, a doctor had to remove their eyelid uh, due to like a growth on it. 
So he had a one-eyed patient without an eyelid, which you could imagine how uncomfortable that would be. So necessity bred invention, and he was a German glass blower. So he actually was able to create a, the first, like you know, contact lens on the patient's eye uh, to to preserve his eye from drying out because he has the eyelid for a protective means because he only has the one eye. And it's it's written in history that um, the patient enjoyed that lens for 20 years that they had comfort out of that lens. So that's a really big um, in, improvement in contact lenses, F.A. Mueller, 1887. Around the same time, a man by the name of Adolf uh, Fick, a Swiss physician, was known for studying uh, the use of glass contact lenses on, on rabbits. Um, and he noted that they could only tolerate the lens for eight hours and it would cause a misting of vision which we know is it was an edema for lack of oxygen, the hypoxia, the lack of oxygen, caused the swelling, the edema in the rabbit's eyes. But uh, also notable around the same time, one of the first people to start using contact lenses. Um, also around the same time, Edward Kalt, a Paris optician in, uh, in, 1888, uh, around that same time, started applying contact lenses to eyes. So. 87, 88, you have these three individuals that actually started to use contact lenses. I do want to note that at this time, contact lenses were all scleral. They were all huge lenses. They were made out of glass, so uh, they would break them. They'd be super brittle, so very hard to manufacture. Um, but you do want to know these three individuals. F.A. Mueller, 1887, uh, the, the German glass blower. Uh, Edward Kalt, the Paris optician, started using them and then Adolf Fick, the Swiss physician, um, who studied um, them on rabbits. Next, we're going to look at William Feinblum. He's a New York optometrist. In 1939, he's the first person to put plastic, plastic to integrate plastic into the glass lenses. So again, these were scleral lenses. They were large, but they were still now with William Feinblum in 1939, the lenses were a little bit lighter uh, because they had some plastic integrated into them. So that was a big advancement for contact lenses. Uh, this next name is one that you'd be likely to see on the NCLE examination. Kevin Tuohy, T-U-O-H-Y. So Kevin Tuohy, in 1948, he came up with a material that you will also see on your examination um, called polymethyl methacrylate. I'm going to attempt to spell that here, polymethyl methacrylate. That is an awesome word, and that's probably why they use an acronym, I'm certain. But Kevin Tuohy, 1948, uh, polymethyl methacrylate. So this was all plastic material, which was huge. Obviously, they're a lot lighter. Um, these could be, these are smaller lenses, so they were corneal lenses, you know, eight to 10 millimeters in diameter. So they're not giant scleral lenses. Now these are still traditional plastic lenses. So they're not gas permeable uh, by any means. So you still had to fenestrate them, you know, put little holes in them to allow for some gas exchange of the lens. And it also relied on the pumping action of the tears, uh, because again, they're not gas permeable lens, but if you think about prior lenses like that were made out of strictly glass and they're, you know, so much better for the eye, but they just could not, still could not be tolerated for long periods of time. Um, these lenses, the corneal lenses, you know, they were a huge advancement because uh, they can correct for uh, astigmatism, corneal astigmatism, up to like three diopters. So it was, it was just a, um, a huge breakthrough. And you could see, you know, starting back at Nero and Leonardo da Vinci and Rene, Rene Descartes, you know, these uh, thousands of years, really, and, and such a short time, the advancement of technology, because you go from 1948 with Kevin Tuohy, next we're, you know, look at 1978 is about when gas permeable lenses hit the market, right? And, and we think of those as archaic now, right? I mean, obviously we still fit them and everything, but newer technology like 1987, um, soft contact lenses first hit the market. So, or around that time period. So 
And, you know, just think about that. It wasn't until like 87 that, you know, you had your traditional, you know, like your AccuView 2 type lens. It wasn't AccuView 2, but just the soft contact lenses. Uh, that long, the spans of history and how quickly technology um, has increased in this field. So that's a lot of just contact lens history. I know I ran through it really quick, um, but if you've enjoyed this video, if you feel like it's been beneficial in your studies for your NCLE, I'd love for you to just go ahead and, and give a like to the video. Um, share it with your friends would be awesome. Also, um, these shirts here, if to the first maybe 10, 15 people, if you want to reach out to me, if you'd like one, I'd gladly uh, send you one for uh, staying through this duration of this video here, uh, kind of a reward for that. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. Uh, it definitely uh, brings me joy when someone's like, hey, you know, I passed my test, you know, because that's, that's truly, you know, why I, well, I started doing this and just it's to, to provide a, a method for folks who can't maybe sit in lecture because I know the NCLE material a lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's very hard to just read a textbook and to understand it without someone actually explaining it. So I enjoy it and, and I hope you all do too and I'll see you on the next video.